Hi, welcome. This is uh, actually a little bit something different than I guess I'm used to doing. However, I did find some information today that uh, was very helpful to me, and I hope it'll be as helpful to you. You're currently watching a tutorial on how to achieve the broadcast requirements that Twitch has recently set. Uh, they last updated on December 9th uh, for their broadcast requirements for uh, broadcasters uh, using the program Wirecast 5.0, uh, specifically 5.0.1. You'll need, if you are running on the Macintosh OS X, uh, I believe it's 10.9. Let me check really quickly. Uh, that's my, yeah, in fact, uh, 10.9 on Mavericks. If you updated to Mavericks, then uh, you're going to need 5.0.1. If you're running on anything before that, you can use uh, 5.0. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and get into a little bit of the history of the problem. If you don't want to uh, know anything about that and you already know that information, I'm going to leave a little annotation. Maybe right up here. Right here. Go ahead and skip that. Too long. Did not read if that was applicable. Uh, but either way, regardless, um, Twitch on the 9th of December came out with uh, these broadcasting requirements. It says here, Twitch, we've experienced this massive surge in demand for view viewing on non-web devices. Uh, that's on game consoles, tablets, and mobile phones. We want your viewers to be able to watch it in all places, so we're making these changes to our infrastructure to service this growth. Essentially, what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to watch on your, you know, your iPad, on your mobile phone. Uh, you may notice that uh, on the Twitch app, if you're not watching a partner, sometimes, depending on how they're broadcasting, you may not actually be able to watch it. They have, and here if I look this up really quickly, uh, they have, at least uh, this is the way it is on my GS3, I have a watch now tab and an all results tab. Now, if I'm watching something and I try to click on something that's under all results, it's going to say, please select this from the watch now tab. Uh, the all results will show you an unfettered uh, result of all the people that you follow. Uh, however, if there is somebody on there who is not broadcasting with these set requirements, they're not going to show up on your Watch Now tab. This is only really an issue if you're watching people who are not partnered, like myself on the website. Uh, but also, uh, I, mean, I mean, I guess more specifically, it is not an issue if you're watching people who are partnered. That is, people who have the, let me give you an example here really quickly. Let's go to a someone I follow. Why not? Uh, let's check out Goldie. Goldie is a partner, so what you will be able to have, or you will be able to see, thank you, Samsung, that's fantastic. He does have a variety of uh, quality streams that you can see and check out uh, from him, depending on how your internet signal is delivered. You know, you're living out in the middle of nowhere, you're trying to watch him on dial-up, you know, that's really not going to help that much. However, um, this is not an option that people like myself, majority of Twitch, uh, has. We, you're only able to see us at one quality, and that is the quality that we stream at. Now, what doing this, formatting to this, these video requirements and audio requirements will do is it will help your uh, stream be able to be seen on mobile devices. Now, the reason that you want this is uh, fairly easy. You don't actually want people to not watch you, you know. It's You want to be able to deliver the best type of uh, signal you can to Twitch so that they can get you to as many devices. Now, if you're not actually interested in that, then you shouldn't be watching this. But the biggest, the biggest problem that I've found, at least in the past, with Wirecast uh, 4.0 is that it was not able... To do this right here. You were not able to set it to a strict constant bit rate. And actually, if you would go on the forums after this list came out, uh, <laughs> they didn't know why you would want to uh, have a constant bit rate, uh, because I believe in their eyes, uh, using a variable bit rate was still better. You delivered, uh, you know, economic bandwidth. You know, you don't want to have to send more information then you have to, and if you have a variable bit rate, it's going to deliver good quality without, you know, I guess when I think of strict constant bit rate, I think uh, it's excessive. It's excessive. However, it does achieve a uh, 
more constant quality than uh, in, in a variable bit rate and the kinds of things that I guess Twitch was having to do on their side in order to broadcast that any better. So the biggest problem with Wirecast 4.0.x or whatever uh, was that they were unable to achieve a constant bit rate on uh, inside the application. Now, if you're using something on uh, Windows side, anything like an XSplit or an OBS is capable of doing this. In fact, it's a tick box that uh, after you've selected a constant bit rate, you can select it to be a strict. There are plenty uh, of tutorials on how to do that. In fact, uh, just typing this right here in strict CBR uh, XSplit, strict CBR OBS will give you everything that you need to know on how to achieve these settings there. In fact, actually, you can even find them uh, right here. Uh, they have them on this page right here, and I will leave a link to these broadcast requirements in the links below. However, uh, you're also going to need to have this codec, which you probably have already been streaming on uh, already, as well as a keyframe interval that is two seconds. Now, depending on how many frames per second you're going, you're you're just going to essentially double that. So if you're going 60 frames per second, that is a 120 uh, keyframes. And if you're doing 30 frames per second, that is 60 frames. So uh, math it can be your friend unless you're me, in which case, you know, you hate it until you die. However, your audio requirements, pretty simple. You can have it uh, just as long as you have it be AACLC, MP3, stereo or mono. <laughs> Ugh, stereo or mono. Uh, maximum bit rate, 160, uh, and then 128 for MP3, and sampling frequency, any, or if you're using MP3, uh, 44.1 kilohertz on that codec. Uh, pretty simple. The only issue here is, uh, up until now, you haven't really necessarily been able to do that in Wirecast. Uh, now, this Wirecast is one that they recently rolled out. They ha did have some issues, uh, specifically when they launched uh, Wirecast 5.0, because they did it around exactly the same time as they did Mavericks. Now, when they did Mavericks, um, how do I say this? Mavericks broke a lot of things about Wirecast. Uh, now, anybody who has been using Wirecast for a long time, uh, you know, you really... You really shouldn't ever, especially if you're using these kinds of things on a daily basis, you shouldn't ever upgrade until you know that the application that you use is going to work on the new system. And I think this is uh, a really good example of that. Wirecast 4.0 uh, didn't work very well. Uh, I say very well. There was really only one issue, that, at least that I found, that was a bug. It would simply just go to a black screen. It would just go to a black screen uh while you're in the middle of a broadcast, and it would just turn everything off. It essentially just go to a blank shot on all, uh, on <laughs> on all of your levels. So it's a, it's a, it would be a little frustrating until you like went back and you reset it. Uh, I think in some of my previous broadcasts, you can actually just see it flick off. I believe I was playing Lego Harry Potter with my fiance, and it would just flick to black. Uh, I started broadcasting more on. Uh, XSplit after that, but now that they have a fix, I'm really excited to be able to get uh, get back to using Wirecast because I think it's an incredible beast of an application, uh, even if it is a little bit of, I say a little bit, it is a lot of a CPU hog, but if I'm going to be playing games on an exterior console, I'm not going to be needing, uh, you know, my computer to be my workhorse to play my games and uh, and to broadcast, so... I, I don't need to be going into the, the pros and cons of using an application like Wirecast, but I am anyways. Uh, that said, I am going to show you. Uh, if you've clicked skip, then uh, you're going to meet me here. This is Wirecast 5.0. Let's go ahead and set it up to, reach, to achieve uh, excellent settings. That is going to be specifically not, where is it? Let me find it. Uh, not minimal. Uh, stream configuration quality. We're going to go for uh, excellent in everything that they want. Uh, it's actually pretty simple. If we go ahead and we open up, you know, I only know keystrokes. Let me um, output settings. Output uh, start size, canvas size, 720. All right, excellent. 
uh, you know, there it is, output settings right there under output. So we have our output settings, and this is a completely blank document. This is exactly what you're going to see at the very beginning uh, whenever you uh, open this up. If you come down here, we're going to be streaming to twitch.tv. We're going to select OK, and this is going to be the very basics. If you set it, you're going to be encoding for twitch.tv, and it's actually pretty simple. If you come into, we need to, uh, let's go ahead and view the details, and this is the preset right here. Now, I have some other settings that I had been using before, and let's actually drop down to, been streaming into Flash Stereo. I had been using this uh, to stream to Twitch, and, however, this is not uh, this was not giving me, this was giving me, I believe, an acceptable instead of minimal. It was giving me an, ex an acceptable because I did have that uh, two second keyframe as well as a good, or I guess a, uh, an acceptable uh, bit rate. But however, I would not, I don't want to just be acceptable. You know, I want to be, I want to have exactly what they want. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at. <laughs> Twitch 720 at 30 frames per second. And what you can see the difference here already is right here, can be found right here in the uh, X264 command line options. This is what you need to see in order to get the strict. This is a strict uh, uh, constant bit rate, excuse me, a brain fart there. Um, and then other than that, everything else is fairly similar. You can see uh, at 30 frames per second, you're going to be key, uh, giving a keyframe every two seconds. Uh, this is adjustable. You can raise or lower that. I typically like to stream at around 1500 kilobits per second. This will be encoding. This is going to be dependent on your computer. I'm not going to go into that. There are uh, several fantastic things and, that you can check out in fact you know what let me see if i can find one right there maybe obs estimator and i'll also leave this uh in uh, in the description as well um not because it has anything to do with this tutorial but because it's an absolutely fantastic uh tool uh to show you what you your machine will be able to handle when it's broadcasting and that's pretty much it that's uh this right here is going to give you your strict constant bit rate uh, and then everything else should be simple enough to be able to meet all of these requirements. Of course, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I take a look at them. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, but I think really, honestly, your best friend is Google. Oh, uh, let's uh, just while we're here really quickly, let's go ahead and um, you save this. That really quickly. Let's do a quick uh, test. Why not? Whoa! Fantastic. And uh, you can see there's also a stream delay that we can set up as well. But <sighs> let's go ahead and activate that. Let's give me no. Is it working? Hey, fantastic. So let's go ahead and I'm not getting any audio signal, but all right, fine. Let's change that. Audio. Why not? <clears throat> broadcast. Yes. Holy oh. no. No no no. Change that. Cool. So now I am broadcasting. Uh, both video and audio. Let's go ahead and send it on over to Twitch. If we can, let me go to my dashboard really quickly. Now the question is, am I live or not? I should be. Fantastic. There I am. So I'm live. Uh, I'm receiving signal from Wirecast to window. Oh, cool. Look, I look so cute. No, I don't. And there it is. Go ahead and refresh, and we've received a stream quality configuration of excellent. So that is essentially, it's not that difficult, but uh, if you don't know how to do it, uh, there really aren't a lot of tutorials on how to do it online. 
So if you were looking to see if Wirecast was going to be a good supplement on the Mac side to stream, because neither OBS or XSplit are available on the Macintosh operating system, uh, Wirecast is, uh, I sh maybe I should rephrase that, Wirecast 5.0 uh, is capable of streaming an excellent quality to Twitch.tv. So I hope you've enjoyed this, and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon.